If you ask the average petrol or hybrid car driver what the range of their vehicle is, they really have got no idea. It's not an important factor, not a quoted figure. Ask them the biggest reason they haven't bought an EV, and they'll quote range. Yet Jim Farley, CEO of Ford, recently made two very bold statements that directly dispute these facts. And he should know, as the CEO of Ford Motor Company, they actually make EVs. I'm Dave, welcome to Dave Takes It On. Well, Jim Farley stated that we don't have a range anxiety, we have a charger anxiety, and he's actually spot on. The reason ICE drivers don't know their range is because it's not important. Where, wherever they are, there's a petrol station nearby, which is 99.99% of the time it's got petrol, and 99.99% of the time those petrol pumps work. They can stop just about anywhere and in a few minutes top up. If the fuel's a little bit too dear, they can just add a little bit to get them out of trouble and top up fully later, maybe at a local supermarket. Well, it makes you wonder how the AA and RAC attend nearly 1 million calls a year to people who have run totally out of fuel. Strange. So why do buyers still see range as a massive issue? Well, it's because if an EV driver starts to get really low, they might not be near a suitable EV public charger, and that charger might not work. Plus, it might already be in use. And even if it's vacant, they might have to wait anything up to an hour to top right up again to full. And they have a point. Until we get solid-state batteries, still many years away from being installed in every EV, the issues remain. Or do they? Well, Zika has just launched its 007 EV, which can charge 10% to 80% in as little as 10 and a half minutes. And this is a great step forward. See, what most petrol drivers forget is it might take them five minutes to top up with fuel, but then they've got to go and pay, and often they have to queue up. That can easily take another few minutes, maybe longer. So 10 minutes for us is, is actually pretty good. But of course, there are snags. Well, first, this is just one car. <laughs> now, admittedly, the, now the 007 battery is capable of doing this. Others will follow very soon. Well, next snag, you need to use Zika's own charger, which is rated at 800 volts. And there are only a few hundred of those, and they're nearly all in China. But that will come as the batteries get more popular. So not yet a miracle cure for range anxiety, but much more an, an indication of what is happening in the battery world. And it's vitally important because this battery is not solid state. It is a traditional LFP battery. China was a million miles ahead of the rest of the world with discovering that LFP batteries were great for most EVs and adopting them. We elsewhere were really embarrassingly slow at catching on. Even today, less than 10% of batteries being sold, apart from China, are LFPs. And the majority of batteries are still NMC. But it's changing fast. China now is 67% LFP. But out in the battery world, there are about a dozen other different technologies, chemistries, designs of battery that are also at a similar stage of development. Any or indeed all of them could suddenly succeed and hit the market full speed. And some of them could probably do the same or similar, but using commonly available chargers that are already out there. There are a good number of 250 to 360 kilowatt EV chargers out there in use, and those would theoretically be capable of going from 10% to 80% in less than 10 minutes, assuming an average battery size of about 50 kilowatt hours. Easily, it'll do it if you're only charging to 80%. And when will people learn about 100% charging their EVs? Stop it! There's still a long way to go yet, but we are heading in the right direction. In a few years, we might well have many more EVs that can charge in under 10 minutes. 
we might also see the number of EV charger locations with ultra rapid chargers uh, passing the number of petrol stations. That's around 8,000. And with the growth in EV chargers we're seeing, there could soon be more individual EV chargers than the number of petrol pumps, which is probably around about 80,000. So the number of chargers is currently well under 10,000. Again, before the comments flood in, although a 50 kilowatt charger is classed as rapid and 150 kilowatts is classed as ultra rapid, neither is capable of adding 40 kilowatt hours in 10 minutes, even if the battery could accept it all. For that, you need 250 kilowatts, unless my understanding is completely wrong. Well, to see where the new uh, batteries might head shortly, uh, we can have a look at Tesla Semi, the lorry, uh, which claims to have a range of either 300 or 500, depending on the model. It uses 2 kilowatt hours per mile, and you can charge to 70% in 30 minutes. Now, nowhere do they state the actual size of the battery. That's still hidden, or the power of the Semi charger. But most experts now have calculated believe that uh, for a battery of around about 500 mile range it's got to be between 900 and 1000 kilowatt hours. To charge that to 70% would need to add over 600 kilowatt hours in 30 minutes, implying a charging rate of about 1200 kilowatt hours, 1.2 megawatts. On the website they show a charging cable used by the semi as being fully water-cooled and capable of 1 megawatt. Obviously, the charge and maximum rate required for the smaller 300 mile model would only need to add about 210 kilowatt hours in 30 minutes, implying a charger uh, need only be around about 500 kilowatts. So EV chargers are already out there that we believe can supply up to one megawatt. And using that to top up a 50 kilowatt hour battery to 80%, assuming a fairly flat charging curve, would take less than five minutes, possibly down as little as four. And at that rate, range anxiety would dramatically reduce, at least it would if they installed enough of those at a fast enough rate. And that's not impossible. Now, people will say that to replace all the EV chargers with these mega chargers would never happen, and it will take forever, and indeed, it never needs to happen. The vast majority of EVs already on the road are limited to between 100 and 250. Maximum charging speed, most never get anywhere near the stated maximum. That's likely to carry on into the future. Even the 800 volts, Kia, Hyundai and the Lotus Electra, rarely get up to their hypothetical maximum of 350 kilowatt. Then only extremely briefly is the charging curve. So for the 14 million EVs already on the road, one megawatt charger is just not needed. For the new solid state and ultra fast LFP uh, EVs appearing on the scene, it's important to realise that they can charge to 80% in five minutes using these one megawatt chargers. So uh, each one could charge multiple vehicles per hour, maybe as many as 10. As long as the slower cars like Dasha Spring and Renault 5e do not plug into them, set their charge rate to 100% and tie them up for the best part of an hour. Bit of education here. Well, if solid state or ultra rapid LFP batteries prove to be as cheap or in time cheaper than current NMC, nickel manganese cobalt and LFP batteries, we'll see them gradually taking over. But again, the speed at which this will happen is something that too many people totally ignore. Deliberately, in the case of my favourite spouters of lies, both here in the UK and down there in sunny Australia. No, not Sam Evans, uh, electric Viking like him, watch him regularly. Uh, there's an idiot over there that states if all 21 million cars down there all became electric today and all plug into a 350 kilowatt charger at the same time, the grid would collapse so they should be banned. <laughs> While he was he's technically, theoretically right, he has overlooked, or I would suggest deliberately dismissed the fact that Australia hit a record-breaking new car sales figure in 2023, 1.2 million new cars. That was petrol, diesel, hybrids and EVs. In fact, EVs were just 100,000. They're the only ones that need the charging. Probably half of those will only ever charge at home on the owner's PV and battery installation. There's a good number of those already and they're approaching a quarter of a million. But even at the rate of 100,000 uh, new EVs a year, it will take 200 years before all cars on Australia roads are EVs. 200 years. 
Not tomorrow, not next year, but long after you, your children, your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren have long since departed this earth. Now, I know Australia may have been slow at abandoning coal and switching to EVs and renewables. That was political. Uh, but in the next 200 years, even they will probably find it rather easy to cope. Which is such a shame because our Australian idiot also deliberately tries to scare you by stating that if all 21 million EVs plugged in at once, the grid would crash. Well, that argument applies equally to the ICE cars that are already driving around there, and presumably he drives. They have 21 million ICE cars and 7,000 petrol stations. So if all of the ICE cars went to fill up at exactly the same time, around 3,000 cars would arrive at each filling station simultaneously, and with an average car length of 5 metres, nose to tail, that would be a queue of 15 kilometres, nearly 10 miles, at every petrol station. And notice he doesn't explain how the petrol stations would cope, nor does he explain the likelihood of all the cars turning up there at once. So, let's get back to reality. EV charges will always lag behind de demand on occasions. Exactly the same as petrol pumps once lagged behind demand. For the first 25 years in the UK of the ICE car's arrival on our roads, they had no petrol stations at all. Full stop. And they coped. Not me, I wasn't around. Uh, for the first few years of EVs appearing on our roads, we were appallingly short of charges. That worked. It is the nature of our modern economy. Build what is needed, not what might possibly be needed if all goes better than expected or planned. And we saw this with our own petrol stations, getting up to absolute ridiculous total, built up momentum, and they got up to nearly 40,000 petrol stations in the 70s before shutting most of them down, they're now probably car washes, and we're down to about 8,000. But hang on a minute, that raises a question. Australia, they overshot as well in the 70s. They reached about 25,000 petrol stations before dropping down to the current 7,000. But how come Australia needs 7,000 petrol stations to fill 21 million cars, while we cope very well with 8,000 petrol stations filling 35 million cars? Answers on the postcard, please, for the older generation, or below in the comments for the younger ones. Well, in all countries with EVs, it's possible to travel from one end to the other. It might, well, probably will, take longer than in an ice car, but it can be done. And before you all go and check Google to find the longest distance between towns in Australia, remember all EVs can plug into the equivalent of our 3-pin plug. So while it will definitely be a lot slower, I doubt there's any part of Australia with roads where the distance between domestic or commercial electricity supplies is longer than about 480 kilometres, 300 odd mile. And with its magnificent advantage over ice, if there actually is a distance like that, I have seen portable solar panel and battery kits that allow an EV to charge directly from the sun. No electricity, no houses, no towns, just from the sun. You can't do that in your ice car. Ute. <laughs> yeah, see, I've even got the lingo down now. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Dave, and if you've enjoyed this, please click the like button. Please also subscribe. We're just on the point of hitting 10,000 subscribers. May even have gone over it by the time this one launches. But please subscribe. Everyone does help. A big thank you to our Patreon members uh, for supporting the channel all this time. I'm Dave.